I love the concept of a fully electric camper. But when we're talking about fully electric trailers, there's always some trade-offs we all need to think about. Many of us teardrop owners aim to power our trailers 100% off of solar in the field. Obviously a great thing to strive for. However, most of us in the field fall short of this goal. As an avid camper, I find propane has to play at least some small role in my overall camping setup to keep me out there longer. Plus, another thing to note is fully electric systems have an impact on other parts of the trailer and this doesn't have to do necessarily with electricity. So my question for you is this, did CampWorks finally figure it all out? Or is this just another attempt to go 100% solar before the technology was ready to actually support it? You tell me. All right, so I've heard a lot about your guys' trailer and uh, I thought I'd just let you take it from here and, and tell us a little bit more about it. Fantastic. Well, this here is the NS1 from CampWorks. It is a fully solar, electric powered, teardrop style camper. It at base features 400 amp hours of battery, can go all the way up to 1600 amp hours of battery and 240 watts of solar. When you start with all the electric, it powers on the interior and we'll give you a tour of all of this and poke inside, but uh, powers an electric stove top, an electric heater on the inside, air conditioning um, all the way through. So everything, no propane needed. This thing keeps you out off of electric and solar hopefully endlessly, that's the whole goal of it. Um, when we talk about that though, the specs of it, it's 400 amp hours battery, it can go up to 1600 amp hours of battery, it can have deployable solar, so we can really keep you off grid for a really long time, but it's really about how that ends up mattering to you. So we've got the whole shell, we'll talk about the composite body, we'll talk about the trailer here, we'll show you kind of everything that's going on, talk about the ventilation. Right here you've got outdoor water, so this is an outdoor shower, it's heated, it's heated off the solar and the electric. But the coolest way to show you guys what the NS1 is, is to talk about its kitchen and its cooking capacity. And so you didn't go propane as a route. Yeah. Why did you choose to go electric over propane? So why do we, I don't want to refill a propane bottle. I don't want my flame blowing out when I'm trying to cook something. So there's, there's just like the utility of it, number one, but also if we can close that system up and we can make it so it's like, you go out into nature, you use what's given to you in nature, and you, you kind of have that respect for it. It gives you like this really amazing interaction with what's out there. So the sun powers this camper. If you run out of power, well, you're gonna blame the sun? You know, like what are you gonna do? <laughs> so you use what you have, and, and it gives you this ability to like really detach from things in this particular way where when you're dealing with the fuss of all these other things, it just works simply. So this thing, the coolest piece is like, we, we say is like a slogan to reinvent camping. It gets you out there and when you don't have to worry about all this other fuss, it gives you the ability to live where you are and do the things you love, right, so. For me, it's giving me this fulfillment of like living off the land, being self-sufficient, but then there's this other side of this that it's sustainable, it's environmentally conscious, it's, this, this trailer has a purpose beyond just for you. You're also trying to protect the lands and, Absolutely. Yeah, behind us, we got the Tread Lightly booth. I'm like, they're talking about the same things and leave no trace and all these people that are like, you got to protect it as much as you go there. The back kitchen, some of the pieces here, you have your running hot and cold water in the sink. You got your cutting board so you can cook here. You got strainer. We always keep our toy, like our soap and our rags and everything in here. And then down in here, your hot and cold water, your faucet flips up. If you don't want to miss our next trailer walkthrough or that newest gear review, or just our tips and tricks on how to have a more simple and gratifying camping experience, make sure you hit subscribe, click that bell, and then check out our playlist for other videos like this. So you can store this all here. Uh, it diverts, you can either strain it and drain it. Um, obviously we don't want to be putting food scraps into water and all these different things, depending on what's in here. Use biodegradable soaps, all those good things, but you can drain it or it can store into a, a gray water tank underneath. So your preference on that. I know there's different competing ideas. There's an induction stove top back here. The reason we use it, right, obviously again, it's an electric camper, so no propane. We talked about not going out, but it also just cooks really nice. You have good temperature control. It, it allows, it heats up quickly, it boils water quickly. So it's really, really nice from that perspective. Um, this whole drawer just levers, slides in, which is one of those little design features. Basically, the kitchen slides into the camper and out of the camper, which allows all our interior space to be utilized how we want to. So back here, we are able to put in our water and our ventilation and all these things, tuck in a really convenient spot just by not having your countertop in your camper. So kind of little stuff like that. But uh, that's the kitchen on the story of it, like to show the batteries is like 400 amp hours. That doesn't mean a lot to some people. Last year with COVID and all the craziness, man, we were, we were like, how can we do Thanksgiving? We, the CampWorks team, like took the camper, we cooked for 10 hours, 
for, or for 10 people. We cooked for seven hours for 10 people. But we cooked a whole meal. We had leftovers for 10 people. We even built the table that we ate on. So it was like the, uh, <laughs> we built, we showed up power saws, power tools, everything running, built the table. Um, on the side here, you've got USBs and lights. You've got an AC port so you can power other things like your spark grill, like your margarita machine, like your coffee pot, whatever it is. These solar panels are 240 watts. They're military grade panels. There's so many cool details. We could do an entire like video on just what's cool about this panel. But at the end of the day, they're manufactured at the highest standards. So they, they last. So it's a 240 watt panel that like, if you know anything about solar, 240 watts this year and then next year it's 200 and then the year after it's 100 and then the panels fail and you're ripping it off your roof. This is an Ashadi panel There's there's the, by Merlin. And um, like just the little fine details in the wiring. So it allows for expansion and contraction as the wire heats so that you don't get as many solder joints breaking. The thermal, like the bridging from panel to panel as it all maps through the panel. Everything we do, we want to put the best in. I'm putting my hand on this body. This body is hand, like hand shaped. I, it took me six months to shape it, sand it. It was a wooden box. Every line you see got hand sanded, hand refined. So it got built out of, out of plywood and then it gets molded. So we, our molds are five parts. They all piece together and then it creates one full sealed piece of composite. That even goes into our rear kitchen box where the kitchen stores is composite. The whole under bunk tray is composite. So you show up to our manufacturing facility um, as one sealed up perfect unit. We had 10 people standing on top of the roof um, and, and totally, totally strong, really well sealed. Water is well protected. The wood was only for the original first trailer as the mold. All this is built off of composite. And then the structure of it, the framing is so the structure of it is a balsa core. So it is right now, but it's encased fully in the fiberglass. We're switching to a recycled plastic PET core in the NS2. And we are gonna be doing uh, hopefully a bioresin as well. So things like that. The reason on that, and it's like these weird little details, but basically like manufacturing facilities, they don't wanna switch their ways, right? Like you, you start to deal with these large like manufacturing pieces. And so they don't wanna switch. They don't wanna have two resins on hand. They don't wanna have two core materials on hand. They don't care about recycling necessarily, even though we do, we wanna do it. So we're just trying to lead that trend. It takes a little bit of time, but so we'll, we'll be switching to that. And then this is lined with like armadillo or? Yeah, armadillo or Linex or we use wrap Raptor liner, Raptor. that's what we use, and it's tintable. So our exterior can be in seven different colors, and our interior is also customizable. So let me flip on the light here. And for people who aren't familiar with it, why do you line it with uh, the Raptor liner? It's, so if you're on a tight trail and there's like tree branches, whatever, it won't scratch it up. It's super durable, so it, it keeps scratches off of it. It creates this like beautiful texture and it comes through on a camera really well, but it comes through in person like spe like specifically well, where it just like reflects and it glimmers, it kind of sparkles. So yeah. it's a, just a nice finish. It's tough, it's durable, but it also looks great. So that's the piece on that. The body, the electrical is Mastervolt. It's the best we can do, right? Like one of the best manufacturers. They have really good safety systems that we use Blue Sea systems. We use Anchor wiring. Um, we use C-Zone technology in the future here to like control everything. And um, the body matches. We love front runner rack up here. You can put your rooftop tents. Obviously, you know, look, look around this event. There's a million crazy things or you, you guys have all seen it. It is a powder coated steel frame, two by four here, two by two, and then a three by three tongue. We have a 3,500 pound jack and we use the max, the max coupler uh, lock and roll. So up top, you got like the ability, it articulates. We use the timber and suspension on the bottom side. It's a product that's tried and true. It's been tested, it's been performing well. I always want to show this detail kind of like up close, but like the piece of it, I apologize guys, we'll, but we'll show this is like the grind of, of the steel, right? It's like we really want to be focused on the quality of this component too. So it's two by two, 11 gauge steel, it's plated so the water drains, it's all powder coated and it's welded onto the frame. So it's a full grind, full weld. Um, it takes a lot, but it, it ends up creating something that it's not just like it looks good, but it's an actual proper rock slider. If you're in a spot where there's a tree branch, you're not gonna rip off your tire. We use the BF Goodrich KO2. It's really good for puncture. It's really good on sidewall. So those types of things, if you hit it, you're protecting your tire. You're keeping everything organized and, and you know, like you don't wanna have those type of blowouts. You don't want those issues. And then of course, right? Like 
you get into some really tricky stuff, I would say this is gonna go anywhere your car goes. So it's got 17 inches of ground clearance, it's got a pretty good departure angle of like 27, It's but it's really, it's like, leave the trailer to go rock crawl, leave it for all those types of things. Like, this is gonna get to all your sites great. I see gear storage under the bed. There is, so yeah, gear storage. So this is where you can tuck. For me, backcountry skiing is my activity of choice. I'm putting in a little uh, charger station in here for my heated boots. And is that on both sides, the storage? Both sides, driver's side and passenger side have their upper cabinet overhead for things like phone keys, wallets, books, all that type of stuff. We can put locks in this as well. We can put safes underneath. Um, kind of the luggage up in here, like kind of the gear, you know? And then um, in the back, it's really for your like clothes, your toiletries, things like that. So kind of, every side, it's a ton of storage in here. So we have people who show up when they pick up their camper, they have their whole car packed to the brim. And they're always like, oh man, I don't know if it's gonna fit in this little camper. And then they like take their gear out and they're like, oh, I'll put this under here. And then they put this under here and then they're like, it's still, still plenty of room. Yeah, yeah. What is the weight on this? What is it coming in at? Weight is 2,000 pounds and plus or minus based on accessories you add on. So okay. rooftop tents end up being somewhere in the 200 to 400 pound range. So you throw those types of things on top. That might not be right, 200 to 400? You guys will know, look it up. <laughs> Uh, but you can throw rooftop tents up on top. You add your, your cooler up on the tongue. We keep our weight pretty far forward in our trailer. Or, so so our, our wheels are pretty far back, meaning our tongue weight is pretty high. Right. So we built this thing to be really like sturdy and stable and track behind your vehicle really clean, not overstress our suspension. It puts it on your car, but that keeps it tracking really well. It performs great. Like you can travel on the highway at good speeds because of that. And uh, you know, you don't have any of that bouncing around or, or anything like that. So it's a 2000 pound trailer. We didn't build it. We didn't build it to be light. Like we didn't really aim for that. It's a small camper. So it ends up being light and accessible, but we didn't aim to do anything for like weight savings purposes. We did like the cabinets. We could use quarter inch in spots, but then your cabinet's gonna fall apart. We don't use quarter inch. We use three quarter and half inch, which is like standard cabinetry in your house that you'd find. You could stand on top of our cabinet. Um, so we don't do anything for weight saving purposes, but that's where we end up there. Here is the interior of the NS1. So the composite body, right, gets you this really good strong body and inside let's create like a, a beautiful space. So when I hop in here, there's acoustic wall panels. It's really difficult to understand and like until you just feel it for yourself. But when you get inside here, it's quiet, it's peaceful. If a bear comes through your site, you're not gonna hear it. You're just gonna sleep really, really well. So the, the acoustic wall panels, they dampen volume. It keeps everything nice and quiet, creates a really good setting in here. And the fabric is actually nice to the touch. So you're in a small space. And in these campers, you can feel like you're in like a doctor's office or something awful, right? Like really, really cold. And the warmth of the walls, the softness of the walls is really important to us. The fabric we use is waterproof, super durable, scratch proof. It's for awnings, exterior awnings. So it's actually, it, it, it's a really good material choice for that too. Um, but it just provides that warmth. All the way around, you can see this. There's like five, there's five windows. So when you wake up, you rise off your pillow, you see out the windows. It's, you're right into nature the second you wake up. There's reading lights, USB chargers all over the place. There's the lights in the ceiling. There's lights right outside, so you can step right out and you're not gonna trip over anything. Inside the cabinet tree in here, which the cabinetry, these are walnut cabinets, solid, solid wood face frames. The joinery is top notch. This is as good of a cabinet as you can build. It's not just as good of a cabinet as you can build in a camper. It's as good of a cabinet as you can build. Drawer stays, all the push button latches. We mount it directly to the composite body, so it's nice and sturdy and um, you have back behind is your kind of utility. So you got all your access to your vents and everything back behind. In here, people have put Nespresso coffee machines so they don't have to get out of bed for their morning cup of coffee. You got your electric heater up here. We can do um, electric heat and, and air conditioning. So both of those would vent out of here. So this would be hot and cold. Back here, you've got your AC fuses, all blue C systems, master volt battery. So that all shows up. Behind here is your touchscreen display. It controls all your doodads. So it keeps all the battery, the electric it monitors, turns on your inverter, you can see battery charge, how many days of charge you have, all that good stuff, and then it tucks away. So what I'm noticing, I'm not seeing a uh, like a max air fan that I'm mm -hmm. used to seeing, so it's venting out the side? Yeah, so we pull the vents out the side, back through the same, the same ventilation and heating and cooling compartment. So when you do that, it's still pulling air from the top, right? Obviously you wanna pull the, the hot air out. You open up your windows and it pulls out. It goes out through the side and the reason is, Venting through your roof is one of the major areas where RVs and trailers leak. Yeah. So it's on, and it's on that max air fan. It's also, when I'm laying in bed, 
I really don't want to stare at that. I really, really don't. And I don't think you do either. So um, we sold out of everything for 2021. And so when we look at like what's going to happen in 2022 and what we're going to do to keep pushing it and making this product better and better and better is Mastervolt is partnered with a company called C-Zone. And what C-Zone does is they actually like have digital switching and, and it basically it'll take all of these components that are behind here and it'll give you control over it from an iPad. I think the next place for you to go is this playlist here. It's all about electricity and camping, watt hours and power stations and how much does the electric blankets consume and the heaters and all our random camping gear. And then I have a playlist here and it's more walkthroughs just like this one. It's growing. I think you'll enjoy checking that one out, especially if you're on the fence of which trailer to choose. As usual guys, stay safe out there and we'll see you in the next episode.